Next up is Iowa's Kirk Ferentz. Ferentz led Iowa to a Big Ten West title in 2023 with a 10-4 record and a 7-2 record within the Big Ten. Ferentz enters his 26th season as head coach of the Iowa football program. Coach, we'll begin with your opening statement. Okay. First of all, I just appreciate the opportunity to be here and represent the University of Iowa football program uh, at this event. Certainly, uh, you know, a lot of changes in the college football landscape over the years and, uh, you know, take this opportunity. We have four new members joining the conference, so certainly want to welcome them, and that's certainly a sign of the times. And uh, first time ever, you know, our conference goes coast to coast now, so it's going to be a little bit of a different dynamic that way as well. So, you know, a lot of changes, portal, uh, NIL, transfers, uh, what have you. And uh, certainly there'll be more coming. The next couple of years will be really interesting to see. So I think, you know, the biggest takeaway is it's like always you just have to offer, embrace, you know, change. It is inevitable. Uh, it's part of what we do, certainly, and certainly it's part of college football right now. And the other components try to look for opportunity as it fits your program, uh, wherever it is that you are. So, yeah, that is what it is. Uh, but I think the best thing about what we do, the basics haven't changed. And the single best part about coaching is being around good good people, uh, whether it's the young people, most importantly, you get to work with or the staff, support staffs, all those uh, different groups and kind of come together and have a chance to uh, work for common things. And that that's really what makes us so enjoyable. And, you know, it's special, it's challenging, and then uh, hopefully it's rewarding as well. And uh, I can certainly say it has been. So uh, as we look forward right now, uh, our 2024 team, it's uh, – First obvious takeaway, you know, we have a very sizable senior class, unusually big class that way, and uh, the COVID exemption added to that certainly back in January. Had a lot of guys choose to come back. Uh, I think we have a good leadership base with our football team uh, based on the work they've done thus far. And uh, as we get ready to head into camp next week, uh, we're healthy overall, and that's certainly a positive also. So uh, the key, key thing right now, just like it is every year, is what kind of growth can we demonstrate uh, throughout the month of August and then certainly as the season goes on as well. You know, just in a nutshell, defensively, we're, we're about as veteran as I can remember. Uh, a lot of good players back and uh, a lot of guys that have uh, done a great job. And uh, like Air Banner team, we expect those guys to be focused on growth and uh, trying to take on new challenges because it's certainly going to be coming at us offensively, certainly a little bit more veteran than we have been. And that's, uh, that's good news for us, especially up front. I think we have the potential to be, be a good offensive football team, uh, but we still have steps to take, not unlike uh, any season probably. And then special teams in a nutshell, we've uh, got our deep snapper back. That's usually not headline worthy, but uh, it's really important. We've got our place kicker and our kicker back, Drew Stevens. And uh, what is new is we lost our punter, Tory Taylor, who's an outstanding player. Uh, we've got a, a first-year player named uh, Reese Dawkin taking his spot and uh, that'll be, you know, just an item of interest to see how he develops. The other other thing I think of note with the special teams, losing a, a player, Cooper DeGene, who's an outstanding defensive player, but also a great punt, punt returner. Uh, you know, it's, it's something else I think that's impactful for our football team. So uh, just in a nutshell, the team has done a really nice job. You know, since January we got started, they've worked uh, worked well each step of the way, and I think their focus has been good. So we're, we're looking forward to next week getting together and, hitting the field next Wednesday and um, you know really this is what you work for this is the most important time for a football team the next month in preparation for the uh, for the last four months so that's kind of where we're at right now and I'll open it up for questions we got second row on your right side okay hey coach Will Decker from LA Football Network uh, after disappointing on offense last year you guys made the decision to hire Tim Lester as your offensive coordinator what was the hiring process like, and what makes you uh, Tim stand out to you as someone that can get the offense back in a good spot? Yeah, I, th I think uh, a couple of factors there. Uh, we haven't been where we want to be offensively for a couple of years. And, you know, as a coach, you have to evaluate things and be realistic. And uh, certainly last year is an easy, easy thing to point out. Our top three, you know, if you had asked anybody last year at this time who are our top three offensive players, they weren't there, basically. We started conference play, so... Uh, we paid for that, and um, you know, but I thought the guys did a great job of playing with what we had and maneuvering their way through and finding a way to win 10 football games. Um, you know, going through the search process was was interesting. 
a lot of really good good people to visit with. I'd say a lot, a small small group of good people to visit with. And uh, Tim just really stood out. He's I think he's a, a really good fit for us. Uh, whether you talk about his personality, but you know, obviously his offensive background, his expertise, uh, played quarterback, coach quarterbacks, has been a coordinator, and then had a rare opportunity last year to really almost take a coaching sabbatical, if you will, and worked with the Packers and got great exposure to uh, a lot of people offensively, helped out on the defensive side. So I think he comes with a wealth of knowledge. Uh, one thing I do appreciate, he's a former head coach. That wasn't a requisite. Uh, but also, quickly in the conversation, I, th- I think he's got a deep appreciation for how football works and you know, how offense can complement defense, special teams. Uh, everybody's going to be working on the same, you know, towards the same end. And um, so that part's all been good. And he's been on campus now since February, very positive, very energetic, good teacher, you know, just a good people person. So he relates well to staff, the coaches, uh, to all the players, and uh, so far so good. Hi, Kirk. John Steppe, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Hope you're doing well. Kind of along Thanks, those lines, what have been kind of your biggest impressions from the kind of Shanahan-style offense that Tim has implemented, and how helpful is that visit up to Green Bay as you kind of get ready to implement this in the fall? Yeah, I mean, you know, every exposure is good, uh, whether it's us implementing it and installing it during spring practice or, you know, watching other people do it at a proficient level. And, um, you know, Every offense has its different styles and whatever, but really to me, success in offense still gets down to execution. You know, the guys up front have to block and the receivers have to block. Uh, and then, you know, somebody's got to do a good job of getting the ball where it's supposed to. And in the passing game, it's the same thing. Uh, people have to get open. They've got to make tough catches and quarterbacks got to be able to deliver and it all starts with protection. So it's, it's not like you're, you're inventing anything. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, certainly. And uh, but I think our players really took to it uh, quickly. I went through a similar thing in 1996, I guess it would have been. We moved to Baltimore uh, when Ted Marchabroda uh, took over the offense for us. And uh, my takeaway from that was the players learned a lot faster than I did. I was the only guy that was stumbling on, you know, things that were in my memory bank. The players just move on pretty quickly. And it's kind of been that way this way, too. So it's been a good transition. And But all that being said, we've got a lot of work to do here in the next four weeks. All the way in the back left. Hey, hey, Kirk, Chad Leistico, Des Moines Register. Uh, Cade McNamara seems to be fully recovered from the torn ACL. He says he's 100%, I guess, as you go into fall camp. And then you also got Brendan Sullivan here, uh, you know, Big Ten starter. So as you go into fall camp, do you view Cade as your definitive starter? And if so, why? Well, I do. I mean, we, we played against him right here on this field uh, a couple of years ago in December. And got to see him that entire season on film. So we had great respect and admiration for him as a player, a competitor. Unfortunately uh, for our fan base and the media, nobody's really, none of you guys have seen him play full speed um, you know, thus far in an Iowa uniform. So I'm eager to, to see him uh, you know, perform for us this year. Uh, nobody's more eager than he is, and hopefully he's not too eager. Uh, the good news regarding the injury, you know, I've told a couple people already today, um, you know, back in the 80s, ACL injuries could be unpredictable. Uh, no surgery is routine anymore, but fortunately, you know, 30-some years later, uh, the advances in medicine, ACLs, you know, players come back from them all the time without issue, and we anticipate that for Cade. I know he's eager to go and uh, eager to see Brendan, too, in practice. It'll be fun to, to work with him. He's been really impressive in the summer program and a uh, very competitive guy. Um, you know, he's been impressive in a lot of ways, and Seems like he's transitioned really well to Iowa City. So, yeah, we're eager to see all of our guys out there, but the quarterback position will be something of note for sure. First row on your right side. Yep. Coach Lynn Herring to Stay Alive yep. Power 5. How you doing today? Good. How about you? I'm doing all right, man. Good to see you again. Likewise. So to follow up on what you were talking about with Tim Lester, can you go more in depth on his relationships with the quarterbacks on the roster and the impact that he's had on the offense as a whole in the short amount of time he's been there? Yeah, you know, it's hard to judge impact because we haven't played anybody yet, but I um, see a lot of positive things. And, you know, I mean, not to oversimplify things, but I've been, I've been at Iowa now. It's my 35th year coming up. Going back to the 80s, I think one common theme, when we play well up front and we get good quarterback play, we've got a chance to to become a good offense. That's kind of been a common denominator. And uh, we haven't had that opportunity the last couple of years. I think we're finally in a position where maybe – uh, that is realistic, and uh, we're certainly hopeful we'll know more here in a couple of weeks. Um, 
But Tim, Tim's fit in really well. I mean, he's a, just, a, again, high-energy guy. He's got really, I think, a good grasp of what he wants to do, a good vision of where he wants to go, and he's been very um, interactive with everybody in the staff in terms of, you know, what, what do you think, what do you guys see, all those types of things. And to me, that's the quality of a good coach and a good leader, uh, and he's certainly in a leadership role. So uh, his transition's been very, very seamless, and uh, it's been very natural. And again, he's a player. Just from my observations, the um, or a coach that players tend to to gravitate towards. And then he did play the position. He's coached it for a long time, so he does have a level of expertise with the quarterback spot. That's, um, you know, I'm not saying he's right or wrong with his opinions, but I'm just saying he's he's firm on what he believes, and he's been pretty successful. So uh, the players have really, you know, really jumped in full bore with him, and you know, that's what you hope to see with any any coach. On your right side, coach. Yep. Coach Adam Jacoby, Hawkeye Beacon, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, sticking with the QBs, the depth chart that was just released had uh, McNamara, then Linez, then Sullivan. Would you say that's still a pretty fluid situation, uh, one through three with the quarterbacks at this point? Yeah, I'd, I'd say everything's fluid right now. Uh, hopefully it won't be in the fall, but uh, right now everything's fluid. You know, and I, I, we could have listed Brandon too. You know, he hasn't put a helmet on yet for us. So uh, when we see him on the field, then you know, maybe he'll be in competition. Uh, with the other three guys. But, yeah, I expect it to be three guys competing. And, you know, Kate obviously has got more experience than any of them. He's had more demonstrated success. That gives him a huge advantage. But, yeah, all three guys will compete, and it's the same way at every roster spot right now. We don't have anybody that's at, you know, no, nobody's uh, just, you know, entitled to positions. It just doesn't work that way. On your back left, Coach. Hi, Kirk. Scott Hi, Docterman with The Athletic. What did I ask you about – tight end Luke Lachey, you've had a good reputation of developing a lot of NFL tight ends. How does he kind of compare and contrast with some of the ones that came before him, and what's his upside this year? Uh, two things about Luke and Scott. You know him, so you'll, this will resonate. He's just one of the nicest people I've ever met. Like He's unbelievably just a nice human being, a really uh, first-class guy. Um, yeah, I think we all, all suspect and know that he's a really good football player, but I think maybe as impressive as anything I saw was just the way he handled a very disappointing injury last year. He was fully engaged, fully immersed, and did a great job working with the other guys that were playing playing where he was supposed to be playing. So um, that's as high a compliment, and that's that's why he's here right now. The you know, team selected him as one of our leaders, and uh, it's, it's not even close. I mean, he's up there at the top. So he's just a great quality young guy, and he's all about the team. Uh, he's an outstanding football player. And one thing, we have a lot, had a lot of great tight ends come through our place. Uh, you look at a guy like George Kittle who really has continued to improve and he's playing at a much higher level, was starting to play at a much higher level at age 25 than he was at 21. Uh, and that's what good players do. They just keep getting better. But the one, one common takeaway, or you know, if you look at all the tight ends we've had, they all come in different sizes, speeds, uh, makeups, but they've all found ways to really impact the game. And Luke certainly fits that. He's, he's more of a conventional tight end, can block in line, but also be a real threat in the passing game. Final question on your left, Coach. Yep. Hey, Coach. Yep. Uh, Mark Culkin, WeRSC.com, part of the Locked On USC podcast network as well. Uh, before the, the bowl season started, you had talked about USC um, and how they used to play defense. What was the genesis behind that comment? And have you had a chance to talk to Lincoln Riley since then? I, I have not. And it was just a takeaway from a bowl game. They played it in a couple of years ago. Dri drive by scouting, if you will, which is dangerous. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a curiosity to me that, you know, because I know they've got good athletes and we've, we've played them. And, um, you know, they're, t they're a tough football team, at least they were when we played them five years ago. So my guess is, you know, I know they've taken some steps. And my guess is they're going to be a really – we don't play them this year, so it's not our concern. But – yeah, you know, they're going to be a factor in our conference race. I'll, I'll go on a limb, make that bold prediction that they'll they'll be there when it's all said and done. Yep. Coach Ferentz, yep. thank you so much thank for you. your time.